Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be looking at some fluid acrylic painting. So this is similar to the acrylic pouring that we did um, at the beginning of lockdown. It was one of the first workshops we did, um, but it's just a bit looser than that. Um, and we're just going to give it a go on a couple of canvases today. Um, if you want to join along at home, you can grab yourself um, either a canvas or something quite sort of sturdy, a really thick piece of card, or even a bit of wood would work as well. Um, so these canvases I'm using are um, pre-used, so I'm just painting white over the top. Doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be pouring paint onto it anyway. Um, if you do have the opportunity to maybe reuse a canvas, um, that's always a good thing to do. Reuse and recycle. So, it's a good idea to cover your workspace, um, your floor, yourself, because this can get a little bit messy. Um, and then any um, paints you might be using, um, you want to pour them out into some jars or some paper cups. Um, I've just got some reusable glass jars here. And I'm using acrylic paint, you can use poster paint, I mean any of this sort of mixed, ready mixed paint is really, really good for stuff like this. Neon paint, you get some quite nice effects with. Um, it's good to have a tool like a palette knife just to kind of be able to move around your paint as well if you'd like to. Um, and then I do actually have a baking tray under here which just slightly elevates the canvas or whatever you're working on so you can let any paint drip off the sides. Um, and then just make sure you've got an area to the side of you or somewhere else nearby where you can put your work to dry if you want to do more than one. So to get started, um, to help the paint move around a bit more on the canvas, you can add some more white. And it's a good idea just to move this around with your palette knife as well. The more paint you've got on the surface, the more sort of movement you're going to get. But the more drips you're going to get at the side as well. So one that I did yesterday, which is similar to what I'm going to be doing today, is this one. So this one was mainly used, um, I mainly used black and red and then I added some of these neon colours in as well. Um, and I just kind of moved it for quite a long time and made sure all the paint had run off the edges. And you do get some really nice effects in there. Almost dry. So I'm actually not going to mix my paint with any water today. The last time I did it, I mixed um, just a little bit of water in with the paint just to make it flow a bit better. Um, but today I'm going to just keep it as regular paint. Um, so it is a bit thicker, it's a little bit clumpier. Um, it's a different kind of movement that you get, but um, it's still quite a nice effect. And it just means that you can actually pour it straight out of your containers rather than having to put it into a jar or a paper cup if you don't want to. So I've got a few different colours today. I think I'm going to go in with some orange to begin with. And after I've got a nice layer of white on my surface, I'm just going to go in with a few splodges of this orange poster paint. And the good thing about this poster paint is it's quite thin anyway, so you do still get that movement. Any 
can do it in this sort of um, almost like a bullseye style. You do it any way you want it really. There's a, there's a lot of um, really good inspiration you can find on Pinterest. Usually the go-to place for anything like this and there's some really good videos on YouTube as well. Let's just go into a bit more detail about different kinds of um, acrylic pouring. So I think I'm going to stick, stick with the orange. I've got a neon orange here so I'm going to put some of this on too. Um, and if you don't want to stick with bullseye, you can put it anywhere. So this sort of technique is really about just experimenting and seeing what happens um, and letting go of control a little bit. I think some people, myself included, like to know what painting's going to look like at the end. Um, and some of us find it quite difficult to let the paint do its own thing um, but it's it's a really nice nice way of doing it and then you can just start to move it around you can always add more paint afterwards if you don't feel like you've got enough on there but this is really the interesting part where you can start watching it do its own thing start filling up the canvas As I said before, you will get some drips off the sides as well, which is really fine. And any of the thicker paint you put on there almost creates a bit of a barrier for the thinner paint. Again, just moving the canvas round and letting it drip until you get your desired effect. such an easy and relatively um, quick process. The drying process isn't quick, but actually creating the artwork is, is quite a quick process. It can be quite addictive and you end up churning quite a few out at once. So you can see here this isn't mixing quite as well, so you get this quite nice contrast between the poster paint and some of the thicker acrylic paint. And stuff like this really doesn't require a huge amount of artistic or creative skill. You don't need to have done an art course or um, you don't need to know how to draw. Anyone can do anything like this. Um, it's a great one for kids to do as well, but obviously um, because it is quite messy, just make sure everything is well covered. It's up to you whether you want to keep going and fill the whole canvas. You can keep pouring so it's, it sort of comes to the edge or you can leave some of that white in there, it's totally up to you. There is no sort of right and wrong with this really. So I think I'm going to add a few more bits onto this. So you get some really, really lovely texture. I'm going to 
add a different colour onto here. It does use up quite a lot of paint as well, so it's always good to um, invest in some poster paint, larger bottles, um, or larger bottles of acrylic, anything that's sort of not, not too expensive really, and then at least you can put a bit more on there. So I'm just trying to keep it moving so it covers all of the white border. Sure, we get it in the other corner as well. You'll occasionally get some air bubbles too. If you want to give it a bit of a helping hand, use your finger, use a paintbrush or a palette. about done. So you do get some really, really, really beautiful effect, if you can see quite so well in this light. But there is some really lovely colours in there. So I'm going to pop this one down to dry. And I'm just going to go and rinse my hands off quickly. And then I'm going to try 
try a slightly different technique, which I've actually not ever done before. Um, so this one involves pouring all of your paint into a jar or a cup, um, and then you're actually going to turn it upside down onto your canvas, and then let it go, and then let the paint move around. So this is definitely an acrylic pour technique. Um, rather than a painting technique, but we'll see what happens. So, just adding layers of paint into your jar or your paper cup, whatever you'd like to use. And then just keep going with the different layers, you can use whatever colours you want. I do find from doing this a few times that darker colours like blacks or dark blues mixed with some really pops of uh, pops of bright colour like these neon paints or like an orange or a yellow, this teal, this very nice sort of turquoisey teal, just so you get that really nice contrast between the dark and the light. So you just layering it up. As I say, I've not done this before, so we'll see what happens. I think that's probably about enough. So all I'm going to do is put my canvas on top of there. And then I'm going to turn it over. Give that an interior and you let it go. Get some really nice effect. And then you can start moving it around like the other one. Some of those colours should start to come through. It almost looks like a landscape. Some 
just going to wait a little bit longer and try and push those white edges off. 